Dear Father, we thank you. We thank you for your tender mercies and for your grace. We thank you, Father, for three decades and a year. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you've been mighty good unto us. And, oh, Lord, if we had 10,000 tongues, we couldn't thank you enough. For you're worthy of all the praise. Thank you, Father, for the youth to show that there's still hope in this world. Thank you, Father, for the house of worship that we can come unto and get a word that will carry us along the way. Then, Lord, I thank you for using me as your servant. I am not worthy, but, Father, you can take trash and turn it into a treasure. And I thank you, Father. Now let the words of my mouth and meditative thoughts of my heart be found acceptable in thy sight. You are my rock and my redeemer. And all God's children said, amen. Amen. If you would, briefly, stand with me for the reading of the word. I'm coming from St. Matthew. St. Matthew, 16th chapter, verses 13 to 21. Matthew 16, verses 13 through 21. And I'm reading a New King James translation. Amen? Amen. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? 14. So they said, Some say John the baptizer, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah are one of the prophets. 15. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? 16. Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of the living God. 17, and Jesus answered him and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Bojona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. 18, and I say to you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. 19, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. 20, then he commanded his disciples that they should tell no one that he was Jesus Christ. 21, from that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and be raised the third day. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. Amen. You may be seated. My sermon today is an answer to an interrogative. And I heard you say, the, the young lady say, we're still here. Mm -hmm. And I know a little bit about the history of New Beginnings. And, 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 and there are folk out there today want to know how you, how you do, how you, why you're still here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Why? How? I don't, I don't believe that the church would be 31 years old. I, I, I know y'all had splits, and I know you had fights, and I know they attacked the pastor, and I know they tried to attack the building. And the devil said, I done did everything to you, and you are still here. Oh, yeah. Because mountaintops were made for praise. But valleys are for perfection. Amen. You can't say that you believe in a God that can do anything and all things if you can't go through something with him. Come on, come on. 
New Beginnings is not a church built for pleasure. It's built for purpose. And that purpose comes from the word of God. Today, people don't like the Bible. They really have twerking contests. And, 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 and I'm not talking about in the world either. I'm talking about in the church. They, they, they think that the Bible is old-fashioned and ways are old-fashioned. But let me tell you something. Death and life is old-fashioned too. And if you can't stay here one minute longer unless the Lord say so. And that's the title of my text. Why are you still here? And the title is this, Because Jesus Said So. You do know Jesus, right? Some of us got a twisted understanding of who Jesus is. We think he's a cream puff Santa Claus, and all he does is just lovey-dovey-dovey. But let me tell you about the other side. It said he has a wrath. And it's reserved for the children of perdition. New beginnings you're here is because Jesus said so. Not just to the individual, to the body as a whole, because you know the church is the body of Christ. Let me help you out here a little bit. Amen. You are just a member and not the body. Amen. And, and, and members die, members walk off and leave, members sometimes hang around and create disturbances. But in the body of Christ, in the church, the church and then begin, I mean, new beginnings is still here because Jesus said so. Now, let's take it to the text. This is my thesis. Y'all can chew on this. We the church of the living God. Y'all got that living God? Living. We don't serve a dead God. Amen. Amen. We the church of a living God, the body of Jesus Christ, are still here because of our faith in the living God who keeps his word. We have a God that's immutable. He changes not. He don't have to be modified. Young folk, don't you let folk tell you that it's a new idea. Sin is an old idea, but salvation is as well. And, and, and the only reason we are here is not because we are good. It's because he's good. Because I don't know about you, but I know I did enough on my own that I shouldn't be here at all. Let's alone standing in a pulpit professing the word of Jesus Christ. But thank be to God, his glory and his mercy has endured and sustained. And it's in because he loved us. Jesus had just had a confrontation with church folk. I like to call them that, Pharisees and Sadducees. Yeah, they were good church folk. And, 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 and they confronted Jesus because they did not want to believe he was the Messiah. It, 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 they didn't want to believe that he was all that. He was married, baby. His, his, his father, was Joseph, was a carpenter. He, he, he was not rich. And they just couldn't believe it because he didn't come in pomp and circumstance. And so they were testing Jesus, asking Jesus, show us a sign. Show us a sign that you will believe. And I'm going to tell you, I don't care how many signs you show a non-believer, he still ain't going to believe you. Jesus told him, I'm going to give you one sign, sign of Jonah, who went in three days and come up. And they didn't recognize that. Because even though they fallen around, they knew of him, but they didn't know him. Amen. Oh, let me help you out. They couldn't confess because they knew of him, but they didn't know him. All right. All right. Let me put it to you on the bottom shelf. They knew him, but they didn't have a relationship with him. And so the Bible says that when Jesus gave them his last word, he turned and departed. Sometimes Jesus will leave. Sometimes his mercy and his grace and his love never fail. But sometimes God will leave you to yourself. 
Y'all, y'all don't believe that. 31 years, and some folk that you love left you. 31 years, and folk who you had depended on became undependable. Y'all don't hear me. 31 years, and you're not here by some cosmic accident. It's because of your confession of Jesus Christ as the son of the living God that you stand here today. Oh, yeah, there's a little Peter in all of us. Jesus asked him, who's the world say I am? Some of them say that you're John the Baptist. Some said you wanted the prophet. Listen here. They all knew of him, but they didn't know him. Now, Now, here's the thing. He asked his disciples. How many of y'all disciples? Raise your hands up. Now, 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 don't get it twisted. You can't call yourself a disciple if you're not being discipled. You can take a title, but it's not who you are. Because disciples are being discipled. If Israel would turn from their wicked ways and come unto me, I give them pastors according to my heart to feed them with knowledge and understanding. Disciples are being fed the word. If you don't go to Sunday school, if you don't go to Bible study, you are not a disciple. You're an impersonator. But he turned to his disciples and said, who do you say I am? Who do you say that I am? Peter. Thou art the Christ, the Messiah, the son of the living God. See, Peter knew something that the Pharisees and the Sadducees didn't know. Peter rubbed elbows with Jesus. Peter sat down and broke bread with Jesus. Peter witnesses the feeding of the 5,000 and 4,000. Peter was the one that shouted, Lord, save me when he was about to drown. Peter got out of the boat and walked on water, and ain't nobody did it since then. Peter knew him, and he said, thou art. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, y'all don't hear me. Yes, Peter, Peter wasn't faking and shaking because the tongue speaks from the abundance of the heart. And when he said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God, he was talking because in his heart he believed in Jesus Christ. Confession. Confession. And then Jesus gave him confirmation. He said, flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you. See, 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 a a lot of times we don't know nothing because everything we know is in the flesh. But y- y- y'all don't hear me. I- 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 if, and I've been here, and I- I've seen him do it. When God give you an under-shepherd, he can't tell you what you like to hear. He got to tell you what you need to hear. See, y'all want sometimes the pastors to get in that holy woodshed and get a whipping because y'all think that he ought to answer to you and not to God. But when you know Jesus and you've been with him, he said, flesh and blood didn't reveal this truth to you, but my father who's in heaven. You know what that says in the Bible? If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus died and was raised, he said, with the mouth you make confession unto salvation, and with the heart you believe unto righteousness. Ain't nothing changed. Confessed, and then he got confirmation. And it's good to get confirmation from the Lord. Oh, y'all, some of y'all been praying prayers and ain't got it yet. You know why? Because you ain't confessed yet. He said he, he said he made confession, and then he got confirmation. And then he says in there, he, and then he gave him a promise. He said, upon this rock, not Peter, y'all. Don't think of Peter, because Peter was a little rock. 
Upon this rock, what? The rock of a sound confession. Upon this rock, what rock? The rock of the Son of God. Upon this rock, what rock? The rock that's called the Messiah. Upon this rock, upon what rock? Upon the rock of me, Jesus Christ, I will build my church. And then he told him something. And this is what the church needs to hear right now. And the gates of hell. He didn't say hell wasn't going to come against you. It just wasn't going to overtake you. Because one thing I can tell you for true, the devil don't take vacations. He looked for those weak-minded, weak back Christians that he can lead away. He said, upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Jesus said that. Peter confessed. The Lord confirmed, and then Jesus gave a promise. Church, let me tell you something. True vision, a church of God. New beginnings, a church of God. Same Father, same Spirit, same Word, and God is the one that keeps it because it's only God that can sustain it. Let me take a moment here to compliment my brother. Churches today have written children off. They put them in a room for babysitting them. And then you want to know why our kids are so messed up. But you're doing a good thing. Make them a part of worship. Let them know what it is to serve the Lord. Because God gifted them just like he gifted us, but he gave us the responsibility of raising them up in the ammunition of the word. And you can't raise them up when they're sitting back there playing video games while worship service is going on. Upon this rock. Confirmation. But then after you get confirmation, it says in there, and then he Gave him a commission. It's right there in the text. He says, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. He got the confession. He got the confirmation. Then he got the commission. What Jesus said. Jesus told him, you are ambassadors for Christ. Listen to me, church. You have been appointed an ambassador for Christ. Ambassadors work in foreign countries, but they carry on the policies of the one that sent them. And the ambassador can't say something apart from what he has been told to say. We are in a foreign land, and we are ambassadors for Christ. And we have been commissioned to carry forth the word of God and speak as God speak and not as the world speak. Speak as God speak and according to his word. We have been ambassadors. We have been charged with the ministry of reconciliation. Just like God was in Christ, calling us unto him. Christ is in us, calling other sinners unto him. Confession, that's good. Confirmation, that's better. But commission, that's good work. <laughs> that's good work. And he told him, he said, whatever you bound, look, look, whatever you, the, the church bounds here is bound in heaven. It's not that we are all that good is just that God has in charged us, and since he's charged us, he has enabled us, and since he's enabled us, he's given us limited authority to bind and to loose on earth. What does that mean? When sinners come through the door of the church and they receive the word of God and they ask for Christ in their life, we break them from the bounds of sin, and we bring them into the bounds of glory. When sinners come in and they reject the word of God and they walk off, then we bind them to the sin and they are loose from heaven. The church, not the nightclub, 
The church, not some movie theater, the church has been commissioned by God to act on God's behalf. Why are you still here? Because Jesus said so. Why are you still here? It's because Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not overtake it. Why are you still here? Because of your confession of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Why are you here? Because God has given confirmation that your confession is accepted. And why are you here? That you may be busy about the Lord's work because you have been commissioned to carry on. But why are you here? Because Jesus told them, I got to go to Jerusalem. I, I, I got to be abused and misused. Not, 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 not just by any sinners, but by elders, church folk, those who are supposed to believe in. He said, but I, I'm going because there's a reason for me to go. He said, because Calvary had your name on it. But the blood of Christ is going to wipe your name off of it. And he's going to say in your place, I'm going to lay, I'm going to stretch out. I'm going to be lifted high. I'm going to be dropped low. And I'm going to hang my head in the locks. He said, because Jesus said so, he said, I'm going to die. Didn't he die? I'm going to die. He said, but on the third day, I'm going to get up with all power in my hand. Healing power in my hand. And he said, I'm going to go to the Father. Sit on the right hand. And I'm going to intercede in your behalf. And when the father turned to the son and said, why? Because father, you said so. 31 years because of your confession of Christ. 31 years because God gave you confirmation that he received your confession. 31 years, that time that you got now to be busy about the Lord's work. You have been commissioned, anointed, and authorized to do the work of the Lord. And all because of the blood of Christ, you have been accepted. You know what, church? 31 years here, but an eternity there. You can't kill the body of Christ. <laughs> All it does is just transitions <laughs> to eternity. Because Jesus said so. I commend you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Keep doing the good work of the Lord. Because one day, is going to pay off. One day, it's going to pay off. And I know that you, you, you pass on this side because the church changes about every five to seven years. But to those who confess and those who have been confirmed and those who have been faithful in service, <laughs> he said when your work is done here, you're going to come on home <laughs> and you're going to be in the big church, <laughs> in the church where they praise him all the day long. <laughs> and you ain't got to never again worry about why. <laughs> it's because he said so. God bless you. <laughs> And keep you is my prayer. Amen, amen. 31 years because he says so. And if God says so, what they say?